Today, I am going to be making the worst mobile game ever created with bad gameplay, horrible monetization, misleading advertising, and potentially breaking the law of foreign countries. But before I can get to all that fun stuff, I need a place to start from. So this is just a little simple mobile game I set up. You can move left and right and you can collect some coins. And the best part is that it's completely unique and it's my own idea. This game has not been inspired by any other mobile games because I don't want to leech off the success of other games. You might notice that the game doesn't really look like a mobile game. I mean, it's in the wrong aspect ratio, but don't worry because I made sure that this thing works completely on my phone and the graphics really translate well to the mobile device. It's pretty impressive. Now, so far, the game isn't good, but it's also not that bad, which I credit to this genius game idea that I came up with all on my own. So I asked my Discord to send me the worst mobile ads they can find. Um, what the, what is this? I'm going to be taking these horrible ads and I'm going to try and implement them into this game somehow. These ads are really bad. Pretty much all of the ads show the player starting out as a useless level 10 little baby before leveling up and becoming the level 100 mafia boss. So by collecting money, you can go all the way from a level 10 homeless guy all the way to the level 100 mafia boss. Hey, I am the mafia boss. Give me the pepperoni. Hey, give me the pepperoni or I'm gonna kill you. There's 10 levels total. You start out as a homeless guy, then you become a crook, then you become a drop shipper, and then you become a peasant because drop shipping doesn't make any money. Then you're an employee, then you're an entrepreneur, a CEO, a business mogul, just ignore that he's facing the wrong direction, a billionaire, and then the mafia boss. A lot of the ads also, for some reason, just have bombs. Oh my God, she has a, what is, she has a bomb? <laughs> what the, what is that? So, of course, I added a bomb into my game. Whoa, isn't that cool? Aside from giving me a way to release my violent urges, this bomb doesn't really do anything. But don't worry, because I have a genius way to solve this problem. Die, homeless bum. <laughs> so the homeless people will just walk towards you. But if they get too close, they'll steal some of your hard-earned money. <gasps> He just took my money. I will take my revenge by removing all homeless people from this earth and not by giving them houses. Blowing up the homeless people might seem a little bit extreme, but if they steal too much money, you'll go bankrupt and die. So it's self-defense. Plus, if anything, I'm just doing the taxpayers a service by taking them out. So you're welcome. The next thing I need to do for this game is make a level. But the only problem is that all of the ads that you guys sent me don't show any gameplay. They're just, I don't even know what they are. So I can't really piece together a level from this. I ended up just making a street for the level because it kind of fits with the theme of some of the ads. I did my best, okay? It's really hard to get anything from these ads. So this is the street that I made. Uh, the art assets are temporary, so they'll get changed. I just want to show you what the vision is, you know? And I think you can kind of clearly see that the street will go down, um, and it's it'll just keep going down, and it's an infinite street. And that's basically what I'm going for. I don't, I don't know why I'm showing you this. After getting a good feel of what I want the level to look like, I went into Blender and made a bunch of buildings, and then I brought them into the game to make a real city. So I can get rid of this weird temporary one, because I'm going to be honest, it was kind of painful to look at. It feels so much more peaceful blowing up these homeless guys in this city rather than blowing them up just <laughs> in the sky. And believe it or not, the city looks really great on the phone. Look at those graphics. I don't know how I do it. It's pretty impressive. So now the city's looking pretty good, especially on my phone, but it is still missing something pretty important. Nah, uh, it's so nice to get out and take a peaceful walk through the city. Really lets you refresh your mind, you know? Nah. Uh. It's so peaceful. I added what I like to call Chicago ambience, which basically just consists of random screaming, gunshots, and police cars, which I think creates a pretty good atmosphere for the game. I also had to recode the script that spawns the homeless people because the new map completely broke the old code, but luckily the new script works just as well as the previous one. So at this point, I've pretty much got a working game, which is kind of surprising considering the ads that I had to go through. What is this? Is that just Family Guy? But in my opinion, the game's a little bit too easy. I mean, there's not really a challenge to it. All you need to do is avoid the homeless people, which isn't too hard, especially because you can just blow them all up, which is also really fun. So I decided to add something to make the game a little bit more challenging. It's pretty easy to miss, so keep your eyes wide open. 
Ah! I took a car from one of my other games and put a crazy homeless person behind the wheel. The grippers are out. The dogs are free. There we go. Those are all the funny quips that I'll be adding to my video. And every once in a while, a crazy homeless person will drive down the street and try to kill you. What a lovely day to be walking through the city. Nothing could possibly go wrong today. Ah! Which I think adds a little bit of challenge to the game, especially at higher speeds. When the game starts to look like the point of view of the pedestrians I'm dodging as I drive home from the bar. After adding that challenge to the game, I think the gameplay is pretty good. But before I move on to monetizing the game, I decided to set up a quick main menu. You might have noticed the really great logo that I designed all by myself, by the way. The logo is one of the most important parts of a game because it helps it stand out against the competition. A good logo needs to be unique, distinctive, and the most important part, original. And there we go. The perfect logo. And the best part about it, it's completely original. And can I just say, Homeless Mafia is literally the perfect name. I mean, it perfectly describes the game. I can't think of anything else that would be better. And now it is finally time to monetize this game. And when I say monetize, I'm talking in-app purchases, ads, gambling, and some other morally gray monetization techniques. I wanna use all of the worst monetization strategies that exist all in one game and see how it affects the success of the game. Because I mean, a mobile game could literally scam you and it would probably still get millions of downloads. But before I do that, you might be wondering, Rai, how did you manage to turn those horrible ads into an actual functional game? Well, this video is sponsored by Milanote. Milanote is the best tool for organizing your creative projects, whether you're an artist, a filmmaker, or even a game developer. I've actually found Milanote to be extremely useful when working on game development projects, and it makes the process of starting a new game project really easy. I've been using Milanote for a long time to help me plan and organize most of the games you've seen me make on my channel, and I truly believe it is the best tool out there to help you manage any creative projects. Milanote is an online canvas specifically designed to help you organize your projects. It's super easy to create a new board and fill it with notes, images, videos, and really anything else you need to visualize your ideas. This is a board that I've set up for the game I'm currently working on. I've separated the project into multiple boards to keep everything organized. For example, in my level design board, I've used notes to lay out how the level will work and how it'll interact with the other aspects of the game. And in this board, I've gathered a bunch of visual inspiration and references for the level. Milanote is also really great for task management. I've got a to-do board where I keep all of my tasks and can keep track of all of the progress I've made on my game. If you've been thinking about creating in a new project, Milanote is the easiest way to get yourself started. There are more than 100 pre-made templates that you can use to get your project going. There are templates for game development, graphic design, and pretty much any other creative field you can think of. Whether you're a professional looking for a tool to help you manage your work, or a hobbyist who wants a place to keep track of your ideas, Milanote is the easiest tool to help you organize your projects. You can even invite your friends or colleagues to your boards to collaborate on your project or to leave feedback. And the best part is that Milanote is completely free with no time limit. Make sure to go sign up for free with the first link in the description and get to work on your next projects. And now it's time to get back to monetizing this game. The first type of monetization that I want to add is in-app purchases. In-app purchases are the most common form of monetization in mobile games. Pretty much every mobile game out there lets you buy in-game currency with real money so that you can spend it on in-game items and upgrades. So I just turn on in-app purchases. That red text doesn't look very good. Now, I'm not entirely sure what a lot of these words mean, but I think it says that I need to upload my game to Google Play before I set up in-app purchases. So apparently enabling in-app purchases isn't as easy as I thought it would be. So I went over to Google Play and I started setting up a developer account. Give us a developer name. Uh, Rye. Next. What? Developer name has already been registered. Okay, so I can't use my own name. What's a cool developer name I could use? Oh, <laughs> okay. I didn't, uh, okay, I didn't think it would let me, well, okay, I guess that's my name. Registration fee, $25. So I have to, I have to pay them. But I mean, I guess it's not that big of a deal because my game should make more than $25. So it shouldn't really matter. I should still make profit. I guess I don't really have a choice anyway. Editor, blur my credit card. I'm the editor, so I'm, I'm definitely gonna do it because you're not getting my information, all right? No Fortnite V-Bucks for you. And just like that, John Balthart was born. After creating your developer account, Google Play also makes you fill out a bunch of forms about your game. Does the game advocate committing acts of terrorism? Well, and don't worry, I made sure to fill them out as accurately as possible. Can innocent or defenseless characters be seriously injured or killed? They're not innocent or defenseless. I mean, they kind of are. After giving Google all of my private information, I was finally able to add in-app purchases to the game. Time to buy myself some gems. This is, these are very affordable. Look how many I'm getting. I made a pretty simple shop where you can buy in-game currency. And because I'm such a generous guy, I also added a way for you to get gems for free. Oh! 
Hey, I got three gems. You'll get a certain amount of gems depending on how far you get. Now, you might be thinking, that's not a lot of gems, but they're free. You don't get to complain, okay? They're free. 100,000 gems. Now, what can I spend them on? Uh, to give the player something to buy with the gems, I decided to make a power-up shop. You might have noticed that the prices are a little bit messed up, but don't worry, that's on purpose. Having a weird price like this just confuses people so they don't know how much currency they need to buy, so it just makes everything a little bit more annoying. The power-ups you buy will help you survive longer and get a higher score, which might sound a little bit pay-to-win, because it is. So the first power-up I added is a car. Eat my fender bender! <laughs> Well, okay, uh, something, something went wrong. The car makes you invulnerable and pretty much obliterates anything in its path. It kind of reminds me of that one night when I was driving home from the bar and all these people kept getting in my way and I may have hit a couple of them, but I think they're fine. I also made a nuke power up. I hold the destruction of homeless people at my fingertips. I am become death destroyer of homeless people. It just blows everything up. There's not really much to say. It's a nuke. I think you get it. And the third and final power up that I made is a jump. Boing. That's right. I locked a basic human function behind a paywall. That's just good business. The jump just lets you jump over things. This guy's gonna get me. He's gonna get me. He's gonna get me. Oh no, I fell over. This isn't good. Sometimes it doesn't always work. So the shop is a pretty good monetization strategy, but not everybody has money to spend. And I want to monetize every second of gameplay from every player forever, which is why I'm going to be adding ads into the game. In mobile games, there are three main types of ads. The first type of ad is a rewarded ad. A rewarded ad is an optional ad that the player can choose to watch and they'll get a reward in return. No, I lost. But luckily, by hitting this button and watching an ad, I am revived. So I added an option to watch an ad to get a second chance at the game after you lose. And I know I'm gonna make it far this time. Okay, maybe not. Technically, you can just keep reviving yourself every time you die forever, but I'm back again. And that kind of ruins the integrity of the game, which actually works really great because I'm trying to make the worst mobile game ever. And again, because I'm such a generous guy, I also added a rewarded ad in the shop that gives you free gems. You're welcome. Oh boy, you're telling me I can get free gems just by watching an ad? Let's go, I got a hundred gems. The developer must be very generous by allowing me to do this. The second type of ad that mobile games use is an interstitial ad. I know that's a pretty big word, but it's pretty simple. They're basically just really annoying ads, which is why I added them. Oh, let's go. This is the mandatory ad before I can play the game. I added an interstitial ad when you first start the game and one every few rounds after that. I could have added one after every round. I was tempted, but I held myself back. That would have been too far. The third and final type of ad that mobile games use is the banner ad. Oh no, the banner, it's blocking my items. What will I do? A banner ad will randomly appear on the bottom of the screen as you play. And the idea was that the ad would block your power ups, but the banner turned out to be a little bit smaller than I expected it to be. Editor, make the banner bigger. So it looks like I did something cool. Even though the banner is too small to completely block the power up bar, there is still a chance that the player might accidentally click on it instead of clicking on their power ups. So it all kind of worked out. And now I've added pretty much every type of monetization that mobile games typically use. And I'm not too sure what else I can really do, but then I remembered the why wise words of Napoleon Bonaparte himself. The French complain of everything and always. Uh, wait, sorry, wrong quote. The surest way to remain poor is to be an honest man. And look, I'm not trying to be poor. So I decided to add some less honest, shadier forms of monetization like gambling. I have got 307 gems. So let me bet as much as I can. Come on. No, I've got one gem left. You can bet any amount from one gem all the way up to 500 gems. And if you're lucky, you'll get rich. Oh my God, I just won four in a row. Okay, I'm betting it all. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, no, I won so much. I won so much and it's all gone already, what? I did make sure that there is a healthy house advantage. I mean, I'm not trying to give out any free gems. I've done enough of that already. Now, gambling is definitely a pretty bad form of monetization, but I feel like it's just not enough. I need something that's going to completely ruin the player experience.
You've reached a checkpoint. Watch an ad or pay five gems. Randomly throughout the game, the player will hit checkpoints. And the only way to get past them is to either watch an ad or spend your gems. I honestly can't think of a worse way to monetize a game. And I think I'm done monetizing the game, which means that it's time to move on to publishing the game. But before I do that, there's still one more thing I need to do. Something vital to the success of this game. I need an ad. So the first thing I did was create a completely different game. Why so... Uh, blown up. Because that's what pretty much every other mobile game does, so it must work, right? Now I'm gonna multiply into a whole gang of blue guys to take out the red guys. You might have noticed this character that coincidentally looks like the Joker. And the reason that's there is because pretty much every mobile game ad in existence just steals the Joker. As a gamer, what makes you different from other gamers? I play figure fantasy. And there must be a reason that they do it, so I decided to make my own version of the Joker. This looks like someone that would eat my children, which makes it perfect for what I'm trying to do. <laughs> but copyright infringement is illegal, so for legal reasons, this isn't the Joker. This is the, uh, Joshler. Josh for short. I then spent a long, grueling, like 15 minutes, editing the greatest mobile game ad of all time. And here it is. Please, Mr. Mafia boss, give me some money. No, you can't get any of my money. Please, I beg you, please. No, I'm gonna kill you. Come over here, I'm gonna kill you. Homeless Mafia is a political, economical commentary on the political, economic state of the world. Become wealthy, throw bombs, kill your enemies. Homeless Mafia is a really fun game, and I think you'll enjoy Download now on Google Play Store, or I'm gonna kill you. A masterpiece. If this doesn't get people to download the game, I don't think anything will. <laughs> and with that done, it is now finally time to publish the game to Google Play and see how much money it makes. But before I do that, I do have some bad news. John Balfard is dead. I know that's pretty shocking. Just let me explain. When I was making my account, I apparently messed up some settings, which meant I wasn't able to upload the game. So that account is pretty much useless now, which means that I had to create a new one and spend another $25, which is annoying. But I mean, in the end, and it should be worth it, right? I mean, the game should make more than $50. Right? I submitted the game, and now all I have to do is wait for Google Play to review it, and hopefully, if everything goes right, it should be published. Rejected. Apparently, putting gambling in the game broke a law in South Korea, so, uh, the game is banned in South Korea, so, uh, sorry South Koreans, I guess you can't play Homeless Mafia. Which is honestly the worst possible thing that could happen to a Korean person. But that's not actually why the game got rejected. Apparently, the fools at Google Play decided to reject my game, because apparently this description isn't good enough. I mean, I guess it doesn't really describe the game, so they have a point. But still, it's annoying. I guess I need to write a better description. But the good thing is, I have a great idea on how to do that. Let me go over here. Scroll down about this game. Let me just... So paste that in there and just got to change it up a little bit. Profit as fast as you can. Murder the oncoming homeless people. Rise from rags to riches and don't let anybody get in your way. Build a dominant criminal empire. Colorful and vivid HD graphics. Obliterate the less fortunate. Purchase black market equipment. Lightning fast swipe acrobatics. Gamble. Join the most daring chase. A universal app with HD optimized graphics originally developed by Rai. And if this doesn't get accepted, I don't know what to do because I really poured my creativity into this thing. So they better accept it. I resubmitted the game and now all I have to do is wait for Google Play to review it. And hopefully if everything goes right, it should be published. So, uh, my app has been suspended, which as far as I can tell means that I, <laughs> I can't post it. So I'm not making any money, I guess. I spent 50 whole dollars on this thing. I had to make two developer accounts and they suspend my app. I paid them $50. So the game was suspended because it got rejected three times. It got rejected for the description. This time it got rejected because I forgot to turn off ad testing mode before I submitted the game for review. So none of the ad buttons actually worked. And it was also rejected one other time earlier because I uploaded an old build of the game that didn't really work. So they decided to suspend my game for repeated app rejections, whatever that means, which is an outrage. I may have blatantly broken in their policy, but punishing me for that, that's too far. Google, you have just made yourself a very powerful enemy. You will soon regret the day you decided to reject Homeless Mafia. If you want to show Google how much you care about Homeless Mafia, you can purchase the limited time exclusive Homeless Mafia t-shirt. These things are only going to be around for the next two weeks, so make sure you go pick up this piece of history before it's gone forever. And don't forget to go sign up to Millinote for completely free. Just go hit the first link in the description. But even though I wasn't able to publish the game, it's still somehow made one cent. I'll take it. That's a win. 
If you enjoyed watching me make the worst mobile game ever, you'll probably enjoy watching me make a game with my viewers' horrible ideas. Just click on the playlist to watch that and a few other videos that I selected specifically for you.